thank you everyone for wishing me the teachers day thank you so much okay so we are going to continue with ellipse i knew i had an agenda of taking two hours classes but uh, unfortunately as i told uh, some painting work is going on in my in my house so i will not be able to you know stretch beyond 9:30 so this room in fact where i'm taking it it's like half painted <laughs> so let's let's get started so today i'm going to start with the equation of normals okay so we had already done the we have already done the equation of tangents we have done the point form we have done the parametric form we have done the slope form and uh, all those forms that i did i would like to reiterate once again that they were only meant for the standard forms right so today i'm going to start with again the standard form of an ellipse our x square by a square y square by b square equal to 1 ellipse okay and we are going to learn the different forms of the equation of normals drawn to the ellipse thank you anirudh thank you so much so let me just pull out my normal diagram i am sure i still have it no yeah i have it yeah, yeah. so let's say at a given point at a given point x1 y1 i'm drawing a normal to the ellipse okay so we all know normal is nothing but it's a line which is perpendicular to the tangent at the very same point so if i draw a tangent at this point it is going to be perpendicular to the tangent at that point okay so what is the equation of this normal let's try to understand very simple we already have done tangents and normals in our application of derivatives so this should not be a you know difficult concept for us so if you differentiate it find dy by dx you may also use your uh, implicit differentiation formula so let's say this is our okay implicit function so dy by dx if you remember it is nothing but negative do f by do x by do f by do y right so negative do f by do x will be 2x by a square okay and do f by do y will be 2y by b square that is nothing but minus b square by a square x by y if you are finding it at a given point you must substitute then only you will get a tangent else you will get the gradient function so please substitute the point in order to get the tangent else that will give you the gradient function okay so this gives me minus b square by a square x1 by y1 now having known the point and having known the slope so slope of the tangent or you can say slope of the normal is negative reciprocal of slope of the tangent so that is going to become a square y1 by b square x1 okay so this is the slope of the tangent so let's find out the equation finally y minus y1 is equal to slope x minus x1 okay now we will basically simplify this a bit because we are going to convert it to a particular form so let's simplify this so <laughs> let's multiply <laughs> let's multiply uh b square on the other side so we'll have b square y minus b y one, and let's keep. Let's keep. Okay, let's divide this y one down. i think it is b square okay so the form that i would like you to note down on your uh, formula list for the equation of the normal is a square x by x1 minus b square y by y1 equal to a square minus b square so this is the form that you should be keeping in mind 
this is called the point form because here you are trying to find the normal at a given point on the ellipse point form of the normal okay so please note this down a square x by x1 minus b square y by y1 equal to a square minus b square later on uh, maybe not uh, in today's class maybe in some later classes we'll be talking about equation of normal at a given point x1 y1 to a hyperbola the hyperbola normal equation is very rhyming to this is just that b square will be replaced with a minus b square okay so there will be a plus sign coming here and here we will talk about it when we start that chapter so this is the equation of this is the equation of the normal in the point form any questions could you show the diagram diagram is the customary diagram at a given point x1 y1 let me call that point as a p i'm sketching a normal so this is your normal <clears throat> a square x by x1 minus b square y by y1 equal to a square minus b square now one interesting mistake which people do here is they switch the position of x1 and x but that is a mistake which you can easily catch because in a equation of a line you cannot have the variable in the denominator right so that mistake is easily avoidable if you are slightly attentive so that mistake i am just pointing out because many people in the past have done that mistake switching the position of x x1 and switching the position of y y1 that mistake happens for many people so you can easily avoid that because a line equation cannot be of the nature something by x minus something by y equal to constant that will be a wrong equation of a line okay now uh, having taken the point form let us now move on to the parametric form of the equation of a line all right so let's move on to the parametric form parametric form of the equation of a line see in parametric form is just that uh, let me just pull the diagram back again in parametric form we are going to learn what is the equation of the very same normal but just that now the point is expressed as a parametric point you can say a cos theta b sin theta okay so this point p has an eccentric angle of theta so what is the equation of the normal over here so nothing uh, different over here all you need to do is just take the old equation replace your x1 with a cos theta replace your y1 with oh sorry y1 with b sin theta so when i do that i'll end up getting a square x by a cos theta Minus b square y by b sine theta equal to a square minus b square. On slight simplification, your result will look like this: a x sec theta minus b y cosec theta equal to a square minus b square. Okay. now a very interesting question is framed on uh, this particular fact so everybody please note this down so this is the equation in parametric form all these equations which i am giving you whether it is the point form or whether it is the parametric form they are applicable to a standard case of an ellipse please do not apply it to any non standard cases okay of course you can apply it but only by accounting for the shifting and everything that you basically take care of when you are trying to solve a non standard case so there you can apply but only along with the shifting concepts that you have already learned <clears throat> okay now uh before going on to the slope form there is a small question i would like you to answer 
if y is equal to mx plus c is a normal to let's say our standard form of a ellipse x square by a square plus y square is equal to b square then then show that c square is going to be m square a square minus b square whole square upon a square b square m square okay by the way this result that you see over here this result is also called condition of normality just like there is a condition for tangency that is c square is equal to a square m square plus b square for a line y equal to mx plus c to be a tangent to a standard form of an ellipse in the same way y equal to mx plus c to be a normal to a standard form of an ellipse the condition for normality is <clears throat> c square is equal to m square times a square minus b square whole square upon a square plus b square m square everybody please try to prove this it's very easy and do let me know with a done that you are done with it See, again, uh, the process is very well defined. You have already got this equation. No? A sec theta minus by cosec theta is equal to A square minus B square, right? And we are basically trying to compare this equation with y equal to mx plus c. So let me write this equation like this. mx minus y is equal to minus c. Okay. Now we need to compare these two equations because as per the question, this e these two equations are the same because they represent the normal, right? Yes or no? So what I, am, I have to do here, I have to achieve this condition of normality by eliminating theta here. Okay. So let us do that very simple process. So uh, let's take the ratio of the coefficients. So M divided by a c theta minus one divided by minus b y cos theta rather i will write it just as one divided by b cos theta and <clears throat> minus c divided by a square minus b square okay so from here you end up getting cos theta times m by a sin theta by b is equal to negative c by a square minus b square correct so from here cos theta is going to be negative a c by m a square minus b square and sin theta is negative b c by a square minus b square correct now we know our famous pythagorean identity that cos square theta plus sin square theta is going to be one so let us use that Okay, so a square c square m square a square minus b square whole square then b square c square a square minus b square whole square is equal to one okay so first of all i would send the a square minus b square whole square to the other side so you'll have something like this left
Okay. So here also you can just do a quick simplification. Nothing very challenging here. And there you go. C square is equal to M square A square minus A square minus B square upon A square plus B square M square. And there was a square here also. Let's not forget that. This is the condition for normality. This is the condition for or condition of normality. Is it fine? Any questions? Wasn't it easy? I'm sure you should have done it. Yes. Any questions? Yeah, it should have been done. Yeah, it was easy actually. Okay, let's have few uh, questions, one or two, and then we'll move on to a very interesting concept called the co-normal points. Anything that you would note, would like to note down from here, please do so. I'll be shifting my screen. So basically simple with the parametric form, I ended up comparing y equal to mx plus c. Okay. <clears throat> so from here, one more thing comes into picture that if I have been provided with a slope, if I've been provided with a slope, if M of the slope of the normal is given to you, then the equation of the normal can also be written as for a standard form of an ellipse, Y is equal to MX plus minus M A square B square. In fact, it should come out as a mod, but I've taken a plus minus, not an issue. Okay, so this can be called as the slow form of the equation of the normal. So we had a point form, we had a parametric form. Now you have a slow form of the equation of a normal. Okay, let's take a few questions. Yeah, a simple one, maybe I've already done a similar question a little while ago, but you can still try it. Prove that the straight line LX plus MY plus N equal to zero is a normal to this ellipse if this condition is met. Just let me know with a done that you are done with it. See, there's no need to actually memorize the condition of normality. You can proceed solving this question in the very same way as how I achieved that condition of normality. So please do not try to remember things which are unnecessary. So solve it from the basics.
Done? See, you can start with the equation that we had discussed for the parametric form. Okay, so this was the equation in the parametric form ax sec theta minus by cos theta is equal to a square minus b square. Now you are trying to claim that this line, this line is exactly the same. Excellent, Archit. Okay, so same way compare the coefficients. So ax sec theta by L minus b cos sec theta by m is equal to a square minus b square by minus m. Isn't it? So let's write seek as reciprocal of cos. Let's write cos seek as reciprocal of sine and use your famous Pythagorean identity to eliminate theta here. So cos theta would be very good, Anirudh. Cos theta would be minus Na by L. Na by L by A square minus B square. And sine theta will be nb by m a square minus b square. Correct? Do let me know if I have missed out on any expression here. I don't think so. I have taken care of everything. Yeah. So now use the fact that cos square theta plus sine square theta is going to be a one. So this is going to be n square a square by l square, a square minus b square plus n square b square by m square, a square minus b square whole square. That's going to be a one. Okay, so just simply take, Simply take a square minus b square whole square by n square to the right hand side. I think this is what we wanted to prove. Is it fine? Any questions? Okay, with this, we now move on to the concept of co-normal points. So co-normal points concept we have already seen in our parabola chapter. That means from a point, we can actually draw three normals to the parabola. And of course, we had also seen the condition where the parabola will be having uh, you know, real form of the equation of the normal or, or how many real cases can be formed depending upon where is the point actually lying. Okay. In case of an ellipse, also we'll be learning a similar set of condition. Let me pull out the diagram. Okay. So from a point, let's say H comma K, from a point H comma K, you can actually draw four normals to an ellipse. So let's say I take the point to be H comma K here. Okay. So from this point, I can actually draw, I can actually draw four normals to this ellipse. Okay. I'm just drawing some orbit normals here. Okay. So maybe something like this, maybe something like this. Okay. Now, first of all, how four normals? Okay. Why four normals? Why not lesser than that? And why not more than that? Okay. Let's try to analyze that first. Okay. So here A, B, C, D. They will be called as the co-normal points. Okay, co normal points. So the feet of the normal, the feet of the normal drawn from this point H comma K to the ellipse, they will all form a co normal point. 
okay and of course there can be various such set of four co normal points right so this is just one example which i have shown you okay now we'll first understand why four co normal can be drawn and why not more or less okay let's try to look into the equation of the normal to understand that so our equation of the normal used to be ax sec theta minus by cosec theta equal to a square minus b square a square minus b square this was our equation of a normal isn't it now in this equation of course uh, the all the normals pass through h comma k so h comma k must satisfy must satisfy the above equation let me call this as 1 okay so if it does i will have ah sec theta minus bk cosec theta equal to a square minus b square okay now listen to this simple analysis of mine this theta that you have in the question this theta is a generic representation of the eccentric angle of the foot of the perpendicular right so this theta this theta is a general representation general representation of the eccentricity uh, i should say eccentric angle i should say eccentric angle of a b c d correct that means let's say this is in reality alpha this is in reality beta this is in reality gamma this is in reality delta but i don't know whether they will be four or not so as of now i'm not you know commenting on that but i'm what i'm trying to say is that this theta is a general representation of the eccentric angle of the foot of the perpendicular so the number of thetas will actually tell me the number of thetas will actually tell me how many foot of the perpendiculars are getting formed am i right so the number of thetas that i get they will indirectly tell me how many a b c d e f g h i mean i'm just uh, thinking from uh, thinking from a generic point of view so how many foot uh, feet of the perpendicular is going to get formed that will be dictated to me by how many thetas i will get am i right yes or no now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a bit of complex number idea over here how see let us say this theta i associate with a complex number so let z be okay can i do that can i associate can i associate the eccentric angles with a complex number i can definitely do that okay so cos theta minus i sin theta is 1 by z so if you add them you get 2 cos theta as z plus 1 by z that means cos of theta is half of z plus 1 by z correct similarly if you subtract them you'll get 2i sin theta as z minus 1 by z that is to say that sin theta is 1 by 2i z minus 1 by z now what i'm going to do is i'm going to substitute these two in our equation of the normal okay so i'm going to substitute cos theta and sin theta in terms of z in the equation of the normal and see what is the degree of z which i get the degree of z will be indicative of how many normal or how many feet of the normal points indirectly how many eccentric angles are given by this theta so let us try to put that so when i do that i will end up getting something like this ah by half i can write it like this instead of writing half z plus z i have just combined it as z square plus 1 by 2z minus bk and this will be z square minus 1 by 2 iz is equal to a square minus b square okay is it fine 
let's do a bit of simplification over here uh, i think this will be 2 a h z by z square plus 1 and this will be minus 2 i b k z by z square minus 1 is equal to a square minus b square okay let's do a further simplification so 2 a h z z square minus 1 minus 2 i b k z z square plus 1 and the lcm of this will be z to the power of 4 minus 1 that i am sending to the other side okay let's simplify it so here if i make a equation out of z i will get a square minus b square z square okay i will end up getting minus 2 just correct me if i am wrong i am just collecting the z cube terms okay So you'll get minus two a h minus i b k z cube, and I'm just collecting z square term. Z square term is this anywhere? No z square term. Okay, so zero z square term. Good. And what about z term? So z term will be obtained from here and here. So it'll be two a h plus i b k z. And constant term will be minus a square minus b square equal to zero. So I've just simplified this. Nothing else. I've just simplified this. You can also verify that the simplification is correct. Anything that I'm missing, do let me know. Minus a h. Which one you are talking about? Coefficient of which term here? X uh, Z Z term. No Z term will come on the right side. It will become two A H Z and minus I B K Z. I am bringing these two terms to the right side. Yeah, yeah, no issues, no issues. Okay. Now, what does this fourth degree expression or fourth degree polynomial in Z tell you? That there are four possible Zs. So this is a fourth degree expression. Fourth degree expression implies that there will be four roots to it, correct? And if there are four roots to it. for each of the roots there will be one you can say argument and that argument is nothing but your eccentric angles for those corresponding points let's say alpha beta gamma delta okay so let's say these are your arguments of arguments of your roots z1 z2 z3 z4 so every argument basically signifies that there is a point on the ellipse where these normals are going to meet in fact indirectly speaking that there are four points from where if you draw normals they will be concurrent at h comma k so this signifies that there will be four co normal points there will be four co normal points is this fine is this analysis understandable so i'm mixing a bit of complex numbers with coordinate geometry here so this four point shows that there are four eccentric angles see uh, when it comes to uh, eccentric angles basically i tried to compare it with argument there are other ways also to do it you know many people convert cos theta and sin theta to half angles of tan and get a fourth degree expression in tan that's another way to do it aditya but this is just like saying that if i have to have four angles okay that means if i make those four angles alpha beta gamma delta to be your argument of four complex numbers and if i somehow show that it will be a fourth degree expression in z then i am achieving the same thing am i not that's the only purpose of doing it 
So I was trying to relate eccentricity, eccentric angle to the argument. Okay. But let me tell you, this is not the only way to do it. Many people, as I told you, they write tan in terms, uh, sorry, they write cos and sine in terms of half angles of tan and they get a fourth degree equation. Now, why half angles of tan? Because see, uh, this, this is very important to understand. Uh, if, if you get, if you just write it in terms of sine or a cos or just a tan, you will end up getting two such angles for which tan will be the same thereby giving you a incorrect image that there were two distinct points, not one. That is why when you convert it to half angles in tan, when you take it as a half angles, you have to lie between zero to pi and they will automatically differ in sign and they will tell you the reality, right? Are you getting my point? That is why many people convert it to half angles of tan and do the process. But I find this one more convenient because Related to this, there are two properties which we are going to see in some time and we are going to prove that very easily when we use the complex number notation. Okay, so let us take a few properties based on the co-normal points. Uh, meanwhile, please uh, note this down. I mean, don't have to remember this equation, but just have just be aware of the fact that there are four co-normal points for case of an ellipse. Unlike in case of a parabola, they were there were only three. All right. So let's take, let's take a simple, uh, you can say property based question. So it's a question also, and it's a property also. Let's take this one. In general, four normals can be drawn to an ellipse from any point. And if alpha, beta, gamma, delta, the eccentric angles of these four co-normal points, then please prove that alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta will always be an odd multiple of pi. So this is a property of co-normal points properties of co-normal points. Prove that the feet of the perpendicular, the feet of the perpendicular of these normals, the eccentric angles will add up to give you an odd multiple of pi always. If you want, I can rewrite the equation once again that I had written in the previous slide. I think it was minus two AH minus IBK, right? IBK Z cube. There was no Z square term. So zero Z square and 2ah plus ibk z yeah tell me how will you do this the answer to that this question or this property is hidden in this equation itself If you want to add the arguments of a complex number, what do you do normally? Tell me, go back to your class 11 days and tell me if arguments are to be added of complex number, what operation should happen between them? You need to multiply them, right? Pradyum, correct. So if I ask you, what are the product of the roots of this particular biquadratic equation in Z, what will you say? What is the product of a root minus B by A, C by A, D by A, minus E by A, right? So minus E by A. So let, let me just write it like this. A, B, C, 
D E. Okay. So if all the roots product are required minus B plus minus plus. Yeah. So it will be plus E by A. A here is also A square minus B square. Correct. Yes or no? So I'm basically using my Vita's relation. So in Vita's relation, the product of the roots of a biquadratic equation is the constant term divided by the coefficient of z to the power 4, right? Some will be minus b by a, some of product 2 at a time will be c by a, some of product 3 at a time will be minus d by a, product of all 4 will be e by a, so that's minus 1, right? Now let us say each of these complex numbers z1 is made up of is made up of such arguments which are the eccentric angles of those points. Okay, so the product will be what? And if, if you want, you can write it like this also, not an issue. Euler's notation. Okay, Euler's notation of complex numbers. So this is nothing but e to the power i alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta that is equal to minus one. Okay. In short, you have written cos of alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta plus i sine alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta is minus one. Okay. Minus one is minus one is minus one plus i zero. So you are comparing two complex numbers here. So which clearly implies that this is going to be this is going to be minus one and this is going to be zero. Now, what is the only possibility which can give this? This can only happen. This two can only simultaneously happen when your alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta is an odd multiple of pi. Isn't it? Isn't it? For odd multiple of pi, cos will be a negative one and sine as we know that for any multiple of pi, sine gives you zero. That's it. Hence proved. Okay. Any questions, any concerns with the approach? Uh, see. Normally, eccentric angles are between 0 to 2 pi. Correct? No. So, alpha plus beta plus gamma can go from 0 to 8 pi maximum. Yeah. All right. So, next property, again, I mean, it's based on the very same fact that you have derived. So second property, you can easily prove it by using the previous result itself. If alpha, beta, gamma are the eccentric angles of three points. So please note that they are just referring to three of the points. Okay. So alpha, beta, gamma are the eccentric angles of three points on the ellipse, the normal set which are concurrent, then show that or prove that this is going to be zero. Hint is, hint is, use this. And let me know once you're done.
Done. Done. Okay. I mean, it's not that that uh, you know simple. Also, <laughs> but yes, uh, let's discuss it out. Pranav says he is done. Okay, see here, everybody. Let us not forget that the coefficient of z square is actually zero. This is a very important part. Okay, coefficient of z square is zero. What does it mean? It means that the sum of the product two at a time is equal to zero, isn't it? That means. Z1, Z2, Z2, Z3, Z3, Z4. Let's say Z1, Z2, Z3 are the roots of that biquadratic equation in Z. Z4, Z1. Uh, I think uh, Z1, Z3 I have missed out, and Z2, Z4 I have missed out. Yeah. That means this should be equal to zero. Correct. So what does it tell you that if you start writing your Z1 as e to the power i alpha, Z2 as e to the power i beta? Z3 as e to the power i gamma and Z4 as e to the power i delta. So can I say that e to the power i alpha plus beta, e to the power i beta plus gamma, e to the power i gamma plus alpha, e to the power i delta. Sorry, not alpha. It is delta. Yeah, e to the power i delta plus alpha. e to the power i alpha plus gamma and e to the power i beta plus delta this should be equal to 0 correct because the coefficient of z square in the biquadratic was 0 okay so i'm just writing it down so that when you are referring to your notes let's say a little later on okay so <coughs> what does it mean indirectly is that cos of alpha plus beta i mean just letting writing it down like this this will be zero and summation of sin alpha plus beta this will also be zero in fact from this particular concept these two properties also evolve so please note down as a property itself that if you take cos of any two of the angles a uh, sum from those eccentric angles which are the feet of the conormal points the cos summation will always give you a zero similarly sin summation will also give you a zero okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to use this result to achieve my purpose i'll see everybody sin alpha plus beta okay let it be as it is sin beta plus gamma let it be as it is then sin gamma plus delta okay gamma plus delta sin delta plus alpha sin alpha plus gamma and sin beta plus delta is equal to 0 now i will not disturb this term let it be as it is because it is there in my expression i will not disturb this term i will let it be as it is because it's there in my expression i will not disturb this term also uh, where is where is gamma plus alpha okay there is no gamma plus alpha it's not possible yeah gamma plus alpha yeah yeah i will not disturb this term also okay now what i'm going to do is this term this term so there are six terms all all together right correct so this term is also taken care of yeah now how do i take care of these facts what will happen to the other three terms now see here sin of note down sin of gamma plus delta is same as sin of an odd multiple of pi Minus alpha minus beta. Why? Because alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta was an odd multiple of pi. Correct. So instead of writing gamma plus delta, I wrote it as two n plus one pi minus alpha minus beta. 
okay and when you take sine of both of them you will all realize that this will automatically give you sine alpha plus beta right similarly so this becomes this term becomes this term these two are same terms correct similarly you would realize that delta plus alpha will be same as beta plus gamma so this and this will be same terms correct and this and this will be same terms in short you have written the three ticked terms twice here are you getting my point which means you have written two times sin alpha plus beta sin beta plus gamma and sin gamma plus delta two times and you are claiming it to be zero which means which means drop the you know the two factor so which means sin alpha plus beta sin let me just drag it over here a bit i think i have space this is equal to zero hence proved okay so from this two other properties also came up that is cos alpha plus beta summation for all possible values of alpha and beta is zero sin alpha plus beta is also zero summation of that and moreover because of the fact that alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta is an odd multiple of pi we also came into the fact that even if you take any three of the eccentric angles let's say alpha beta and gamma in the case then this term will also be giving you the zero expression is it fine anything that you would like me to repeat over here do let me know so first i use the fact that since there is no z square coefficient or z square coefficient is zero the sum of the product two at a time is zero which led to these two results from the second result i wrote this expression in yellow and i did not disturb the terms which were already present in my given expression that is these three terms i have ticked them on the top okay and the rest of three terms they actually convert to the ticked terms only so sin gamma plus delta is as good as sin alpha plus beta right because of this hint which i gave you similarly sin delta plus alpha is same as sin beta plus gamma and sin beta plus delta is same as sin alpha plus gamma and that's why this entire sum becomes twice of the given expression and which is anyways going to be zero because this is zero so the property holds true is it fine any questions now these feet of the uh, perpendiculars that means these co normal points that's the third property the feet of the co normal points they lie on a curve okay whose equation is whose equation is a square minus b square x y uh, let me write it down like this the feet of the co normal points concurrent at h comma k lie on a curve a square minus b square x y plus b square uh, k x Minus a square h y equal to zero. Okay, please prove this. Please prove this that the feet of the normal they lie on a curve which is given by this expression. Everybody, please prove this.
see the proof is very simple i mean you just it's just a you know observation that you have to do so let me just pull out the diagram here okay so let us say let us say this is my h comma k point these are my feet of the perpendicular i'm not getting up. no worries no worries see first of all what is the equation of the normal that we know of a square x by x1 okay minus b square y by y1 is equal to a square minus b square correct now as per this particular condition x1 y1 is the point this is the this is representative of the coordinates of the point right and this normal should pass through h comma k right so if you substitute your if you substitute your h with x or x with h y with a k then this is the equation that i would be getting isn't it in short what you have written over here is a square a square h y1 minus b square k x1 is equal to a square minus b square x1 y1 okay in short you have written something like this a square minus b square x1 y1 plus b square k x1 minus a square h y1 equal to zero right but can i say the same will be true this will be true even if your point is x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4 correct right now you started with this point as your initiating point you started with this equation then you made h comma k you know satisfy the equation but the same will be true even if you have taken b as your starting point that means you would have started with your a square x by x2 minus b square y by y2 is equal to a square minus b square and still h comma k will satisfy that equation of the normal isn't it do you agree with me on this or not this is very important this will be true even for these three points other than x1 y1 so x1 y1 is definitely satisfying it even x2 y2 will satisfy it even x3 y3 will satisfy it and even x4 y4 will satisfy it am i right are you convinced with that correct so now just have a look at it if and if you replace your x1 y1 with x2 y2 okay and further replace it with x3 y3 further replace with x4 y4 correct now what is the structure of this equation this basically equation is trying to say that i'm so sorry yeah this this uh, structure that you see over here these four expression that you see here what this what do they seem to suggest they seem to suggest that if you replace your xi yi's with your xy you will end up getting a curve which is going to be satisfied by all the four points and that curve is this so this equation will be satisfied by let me write it here this equation will be satisfied by all these points which are your feet of the normal correct and this is the equation that we are basically asked to prove over here correct so the feet of the conormal points or you can say the coordinates of the conormal points or the feet of the concurrent normals to an ellipse they will pass through this curve okay so this itself can come as a question to you in your competitive exams by the way this is given a special name this is called the aplonian rectangular hyperbola aplonian rectangular hyperbola if you remember we had used this word aplonian 
circle in case of a complex number last year correct so a complex number which basically satisfies this locus condition where k is not equal to 1 then z will trace a aplonian circle right remember i don't know how many of you remember that last year we had done complex number so and this uh, basically the name of aplonian has come from a very very ancient mathematician aplonius so just to honor his name this was given maybe he had done some work on this field that's why so i'm not very sure about the history behind it but this is what we call as the aplonian rectangular hyperbola so the feet of the conormal points yeah feet of the uh, concurrent normals or the conormal points actually satisfy this curve which is called aplonian rectangular hyperbola exactly exactly so this rectangular hyperbola will actually satisfy uh this uh, this four co normal points will actually satisfy both ellipse equation and this rectangular hyperbola why don't we uh, why don't we do one thing uh, you know we can try to figure it out but of course we have to ensure i have taken a point h comma k okay maybe we'll try it out you know uh, offline some of you please try this out and see how does the diagram look like okay so i'll just write it down try it out on geogebra and share on the group if I, if you are if at all you are going to get these curves and so that everybody sees them so you have to choose your point h comma k very you know carefully so that you can draw that four co normal points better to make co normal points is choose your uh, your uh, eccentric angles first such that their there are uh, some of the angles of the eccentric angle is coming out to be an odd multiple of pi from there you sketch uh, four normals they will be concurrent at h comma k rather than doing it the other way round okay next concept that we are going to talk about is very similar to what we have already done in circle so in circles we had done concepts of pair of tangents okay drawn from x1 y1 so if you remember the concept was t square is equal to s s1 so this used to give you the pair of tangents drawn from an external point x1 y1 onto the ellipse so let me just pull in a diagram quickly over here so let's say from this external point x1 y1 you are drawing two tangents so this pair of tangent give equation is given by t square is equal to s s1 i hope you are all aware of what is your t expression so if i talk about a standard case okay if i talk about a standard case this is what we call as s this is what we call as a s1 and this is what we call as a t i hope you all are well aware now of well aware of now the basic expression for s s1 and t okay maybe a simple question we will take up on this let's say we have this ellipse okay question is find the equation of pair of tangents pair of tangents drawn from uh let's say point 4 comma 3 let's say let's say 4 comma 5 to be more or say 5 comma 6 to be more precise because i want to be outside the ellipse just to get a hands on on this formula that's it i don't have any other intention just to get a hands on on this formula t square is equal to ss1 just let's just take this problem no need to simplify it just write down the expression 
and leave it. I mean, you can always simplify it if, if the need be, but just write down the expression and just let me know by saying it done on the chat box. Done. Anusha is done. Okay, simple. So what is your T expression here? T expression will be X, X1, plus y y1 okay by a square minus one so whole square of this is equal to s and s1 s1 will be just replace your x with a five in the equation of the ellipse and y with a six in the equation of an ellipse i'm not simplifying it okay so whatever equation you get from here this will be a second degree equation which will represent pair of straight lines or pair of tangents. Is it fine? Any questions? Okay. Now many times students ask me, sir, if I want to get the two tangents separately, then what will I do? One way is to basically uh, factorize this second degree equation, which I will be telling you when I do pair of straight lines concept with you. Other would be you start the, once you know this point, you can start the fact that let the tangent be this. Okay. So once you start with this as a tangent equation, use the condition of tangency. Okay. Then use the condition of tangency. C square is equal to a square M square plus B square. You'll end up getting a quadratic in M. Okay, solve the quadratic to get two values of M, put it over here, you get the two tangents separately. I'll repeat whatever I've said. Okay, so please pay attention. If let's say the requirement be you want the two equation of the tangent separately. Okay, so what do we what do you do for that? So you say you, you assume that the tangent equation is y minus y1 is equal to slope x minus x1. Remember y1 and x1 values will be given to you. So y1 and x1 values will be given to you. So this is the condition. This is the tangent and this is the equation of an ellipse. You know your m, you know your a, you know your b, you know your c. Write down this equation in terms of, you know, a quadratic. This will give you a quadratic in m. Okay, so solve the quadratic, solve the quadratic in M. You'll get two values. Okay, those two values, you put it over here. Those will be giving you the two tangents. Approach is clear. How to find two tangents separately? Okay. Other concepts like equation of chord of contact. Uh, let me just take up one more concept. Uh, since we have discussed about equation of pair of tangents, director circle, director circle. So what is the locus definition of director circle? Director circle basically is the locus of points from where perpendicular tangents or oh, let me write it down from where two tangents 
can be drawn to the curve drawn to the curve which are perpendicular to each other okay so the very same diagram now i'm drawing it again oh sorry so if you have if you have a point from where you are drawing two tangents which are perpendicular to each other okay let's say this is my point p okay then the locus of all such points the locus of all such points okay that will be the director circle and of course in this case also it will trace a circle only so let me just i know draw a circular path around it yeah now i would request you all to give me the equation of this director circle okay so what is the equation of this director circle so let's say this is a locus question which was given to us in let's say je main exam okay so this is a standard case of an ellipse x square by a square y square by b square equal to 1 and i want to find the locus of all such points from where if you draw tangents from where if you draw tangents to the ellipse okay any point you take it draw tangents to the ellipse that those tangents will be at 90 degrees to each other so what is the equation of this director circle please solve this and give me your response on the chat box this will also help me to test your understanding of how to solve locus questions okay should we discuss it all right so let us say this slope is m okay and it is passing through h comma k so you can write down the equation of you can write down the equation of the tangent to be this okay or in short y is equal to mx minus or you can say ms plus k minus mh okay now first of all you are claiming that this is a tangent this is a tangent to tangent to tangent to our ellipse okay now uh, one important thing i would like to highlight over here many a times people argue with me sir why do you take h comma k in locus questions and then you substitute it with x and y see here there is an already x and y sitting in our tangent equation and if you write your h in k again with an x and y that will create a lot of chaos right so i think uh, last week only i was uh, teaching locus to your juniors so in one of the batches one student was quite irritated he said that sir why do you take h comma k and then replace it back with x and y in the last step why don't you take x and y in the beginning itself and save your time so then i told you that maybe it is not going to hurt you right now but later on when you do conics there will be lot of instances where x and y is also used and h and k is also used 
and there you will get confused <laughs> okay so it's very important that we follow the norms that is you know discussed with us anyways if this is a tangent then condition of tangency must be fulfilled so what is the c here this is the c right a square, m square, and b square, that is not going to change. Now, this is a quadratic in m. This is what I was basically talking about. So, if you write this as a quadratic in m, you will have k square minus 2kmh plus m square h square equal to a square m square plus b square. So, this will be m square a square minus h square. Okay. And you'll have plus 2kmh plus b square minus k square equal to 0, right? Now, in this quadratic, you have two roots, m1 and m2, right? Let us say. And you want the you want the two tangents to be perpendicular. So, let's say if this is m1 and this is m2, and you want them to be perpendicular, clearly m1, m2 should be negative 1, isn't it? Very good, Aditya. That's the right answer. So here M1, M2 is going to be minus 1. M1, M2 is nothing but the product of the roots of a quadratic, which is C by A. Right? We all know by beta's relation, this is equal to C by A. So this should be minus 1. That is to say that B square minus K square is H square minus A square. In short, H square plus K square is equal to A square plus B square. Now here you generalize your H with with x and k with a y, that gives you the equation of the director circle to be this. Please note that this radius is even more than the, uh, the, the semi-major axis length. So it is even more than that. It is under root of a square plus b square, that is the radius. Okay, so radius of director circle is, radius of director circle is, okay. And the center of the circle is same as that of the conic. Okay. So this is uh, in general applicable to any type of an ellipse. The center will be same as that of the center of the ellipse, wherever it is, whether it is shifted, whether it is oblique and radius will always be under root of a square plus b square. So this is true in general. Is this fine? So before we move on, uh, we will like I will like to discuss with you equation of a chord bisected at a given point x1, y1. This concept is also same as what we learned for a circle and parabola, which is t equal to s1. Okay. So if you have been given a conic. If you have been given a conic, x square by a square, y square by b square equal to 1. And there is a chord whose mid, midpoint is known to you. Let's say this midpoint is known to you, x1, y1. Then the equation of this chord is given by t equal to s1. That is. Now, it is very easy for us to cancel out minus 1 and minus 1, but just for remembering purpose, so that this is easy to remember, isn't it? So you can just carry that extra burden, even though it will get cancelled from both the sides while you are trying to solve this problem. But this helps you to remember it, t equal to s1. Okay. So... I will not be going into the derivation, etc., because you know, the result is more important for us. And we'll just take a question based on this.
अगेन अ लोकस क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन से इज टेंजेंट्स एट राइट एंगल्स आर ड्रॉन टू दिस इलिप्स शो दैट द लोकस ऑफ द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ द कॉल ऑफ कॉन्टैक्ट इज दिस कर्व ब्यूटिफुल क्वेश्चन next class when we meet we are going to talk about uh, equation of the diameter and something related to conjugate diameter i think that's the only concept which is left off conjugate diameter is also important A lot of questions in ge advance uh, have come on that so we'll talk about that and then we can close this chapter and move on to hyperbola tangents of triangle okay so basically you are drawing two tangents on it which are at right angles okay this is your chord of contact okay we have to find the locus of the midpoints so let's say this is point p let's say this is ab so we have to find the locus of this guy let's say i call this point to be q point h comma k so if you keep changing this p position on the director circle obviously the chord of contact will also keep moving and the midpoint will also keep moving and we have to find the locus of the midpoint okay let's solve this question in this way let's say this point is x1 y1 okay now what is the chord of contact when you draw two tangents from x1 y1 chord of contact is t equal to 0 we have already seen it so that means your equation of ab equation of ab is going to be x x1 by a square y y1 by b square equal to 1 now at the same time be very careful x1 y1 basically lies on director circle we will use this little later on as of now we'll keep it in terms of x1 y1 same if you find the equation of the chord whose midpoint is h comma k the equation is t equal to s1 even this will give you the equation of ab only which is t equal to s1 so that is equal to h x by a square i'm just writing t expression a uh, k y by b square minus 1 that will h eventually get cancelled so let's not waste time writing that okay now here these two equations represent the same things this is also equation of ab this is also equation of ab okay so let's compare one and two because 
बोथ रिप्रेजेंट इक्वेशन ऑफ ए बी और बी करेक्ट सो इफ यू कंपेयर द कोफिशियंट लेट्स कंपेयर द कोफिशियंट ऑफ एक्स बाय ए स्क्वायर ऑन बोथ साइड सो एक्स वन बाय एच विल बी इक्वल टू वाई वन बाय के प्लीज नोट दैट other terms will get cancelled off so there is no point writing it down 1 by h square by a square plus k square by b square correct so this is a vital step for us because after this our problem is almost solved how your x1 is h by this and y1 is k by this okay and this must satisfy the director circle equation which is just now seen as x1 square plus y1 square is equal to a square plus b square so i'll be just putting these values in place of x1 and in place of y1 over here that will lead to h square by h square by a square k square by b square whole square similarly k square by h square by a square k square by b square whole square equal to a square plus b square okay ha uh, i think we are very close to the expression yeah so almost done almost done so h square plus k square you can just you know take one by this common out maybe after the class you can try sketching it also what kind of a curve comes out from here <laughs> okay and then you can just you can just make it on geogebra and check okay now generalize it after this you can generalize it so you'll end up getting x square by a square y square by b square Whole square as x square plus y square by a square plus b square. This is the desired locus. Okay. Now this chapter is still not completed. As I told you, a concept of diameter, conjugate diameter. We'll also talk about bit of concyclic points also. So next class I will be definitely finishing it off, and maybe I will also start with hyperbola. Whenever we meet next. Okay. thank you class